Hello, this is uh, Industrial Control Circuit Troubleshooting 1, 4th module. Now we are doing extra skill test number 4. The work order that we received stated that the batch did not complete its cycle. So what's wrong? Let's dive in. Usually, I will try to check the external device and the circuit to see if got any abnormality. Then I will run the process to, to observe for any abnormality. By looking at this circuit and external device, I noticed that there is no lighting on the control panel. So most probably the fuse is blown. By looking at the drawing, this is, sorry, this is the drawing, okay. This is a schematic drawing for control diagram. This is a schematic drawing for the power diagram, which is an electrical diagram. This is a control or loop diagram or signal diagram you know that the life or AC current is from the power schematic here is a power schematic current from the transformer go to the flow through flow to the control schematic via the fuse 12 if the fuse is blown there's no way the current can flow to the control schematic so we have to measure the fuse so switch to AC voltage mode then put the probe the black probe at the ground point and then measure the upstream of fuse there's a voltage that means the upstream is okay then put the downstream of the fuse zero volt means the fuse is blown the fuse blows because of short circuit short circuit can be due to effort can be due to device internally short circuit no matter what we have to check the resistance for both types of for both type of faults to, to as we know resistance cannot be measured live so we had to carve the power supply so that the circuit is dead so switch to off mode for the multimeter then we cut off the power supply to the circuit and perform the local takeout and verify the local takeout is done properly okay to check the effort or the circuit or device internally short circuit we had to open both end of the connection for me i prefer to open the common life and the common neutral in this case i remove the fuse okay and then disconnect the common neutral now we have both end open one at the common life the other at the common neutral okay always check the effort before we check the device internally short circuit okay to check the effort place the black probe at the ground point to check the ground fault or earth fault and put the red probe at the other end okay under ideal condition when both end is disconnected we should get ol for its resistance or open circuit resistance if you get any resistance reading it means okay there is a fault whether the resistance is low lower than 2 ohm or high or higher than 2 ohm okay if you get the open circuit it means the circuit is good or there is a device internally short circuit okay in this case there's a resistance reading it means there's a effort whether before the load at the load or after the load okay so by how do we troubleshoot this effort there's a lot of way so the easiest way is divide and conquer strategy okay meaning to divide the big channel circuit into separate parallel circuit and conquer it by checking the effort one by one okay to check it we should we should use the loop as a reference this is the easiest way to me first check the effort before the load then check the effort at the load then check the effort after the load so as we know current will flow from the multimeter to the point two and then to the control schematic after that when you reach here it will divide into four paths first path second path third path and fourth path when you say branch out or divide it means parallel circuit why you go through this path and this path because the water level at 40 percent so when the water level at 40%, the float switch will be triggered to close mechanically and the current 
is able to flow through these two paths okay so now the first thing we have to do is to check the earth fault before the load so what am i going to do is i will disconnect point one here point two here point two here and point one here if the register reading on the multimeter is of ol or open circuit it means the circuit before the load is okay in other words there's no earth fault before the load okay if there's a reason reading that means it there is an earth fault okay now part we need to open power one ready one r12 r22 power one ready one A power one ready one and I want to add to two I want to add to two okay the resistance reading here is open circuit meaning this okay okay and after that I have to check the earth fault at the load okay what I need to do normalize back the circuit con the wiring connection and then open the point two here point seven here point seven here and point two here if the register reading is open circuit meaning there is no earth fault at the load and before the load if there is a register reading that means there is an earth fault at the load you can okay <clears throat> so now I have to open power 2 ready to R17 R1 R27 okay, R17 R27 power 2 and ready to okay the reading is all open circuit meaning there is no effort before the load and at the load so the next step I have to do is I choose one point to connect back it, I can, it, can, it can be this point 0.7 here point 0.7 here or point 0.2 here I choose point 0.2 of power lighting okay connect back this point then I shift my red probe to point number 2 it's a personal preference of course you can re let the red probe station at point 2 of fuse 12 it's just a personal preference for me I would prefer to put at the point 2 of power lighting it's more easier for me to do troubleshooting okay now I connect that power 2 okay power 2 then I shift the red probe to power 2 right okay there is a resistance reading that means there is a fault okay then repeat the troubleshooting step that I did just now okay again use the strategy of divide and conquer divide the circuit into separate individuals parallel circuit and then conquer by checking the effort one by one how do we okay isolate the divide the circuit into different parallel circuit very simple we can temporarily assume there's an effort after the load okay let's say for this parallel circuit we can assume there's a load after this the effort after this load so when the current okay from the multimeter flow to the point two and come here it will branch out into two paths when i say branch or divide it means parallel circuit then combine then it will short circuit to earth okay okay the next example is this path okay if let's say there is a fault after the load at this point so when the current from the multimeter go to point two then come here it will divide or punch out into four paths this is the first path second path combined together with third path and fourth path then short circuit to earth okay so this first path second path third path and fourth path form a parallel circuit and so on okay even though this is not a parallel circuit it is just a normal circuit but the concept of troubleshooting remains the same okay let's start with this parallel circuit check the earth fault before the load so i will open the connection there 0.7 here and 0.2 here r97 alarm 2 okay alarm 2 and r97 r97 okay resistance remain the same that means there's actually no effort at this parallel circuit whether before the load or at the load after the load how i know for example 
we assume, although we do not know which part of the parallel circuit having, uh, having a fault, we just assume the a fault occur at this parallel circuit, maybe somewhere after the load of this parallel circuit. So, as we know, current travel the path with least resistance. If there is an earth fault here, all the current will short circuit to this point because earth of ground having a lowest resistance. So that because of this lower resistance, it will cause short circuit to earth. So the current from the multimeter to point two will straight away travel this path and then divide into three paths in this parallel circuit, then short circuit to earth. Okay. So no matter which parallel circuit or normal circuit that we measure or check is up for before the load, at the load, after the load, the resistance will always remain the same because the current will always travel this path and then short circuit to earth due to this earth fault here. Okay. So now we can conduct further checking at the load and after the load. It's up to individual. Let's say I still want to check the earth fault at the load for this parallel circuit just go ahead. So I normalize back the connection, then I open R92 and alarm 1. Okay, R92 and alarm 1. See, the resistance remain the same. That means there is no effort before the load and at the load. Of course, I can continue to check the earth fault after the load, but I will not waste the time because I know the resistance remain the same before the load and at the load. That means after the even I check out the earth fault after the load, the resistance also will remain the same. Okay, so I normalize back the wiring connection and move on to other circuit. Okay, I normalize this circuit and normalize R92. Okay, now I continue to check. R8, R3, R4, and ready. Okay? Eh, sorry, and R7. Okay? R8, R3, R4, R7. R8. Okay? Okay, before the load, R8, 7. Resistant the same. R8, 2. Resistant the same. Then, R3, 7, and R32. R3, 7, and R32. Okay, still the same. R4, 7, R42. R4, 7, and R42. Resistance remain the same. There's no off fault before the load, at the load, and after the load. And then R77 and R72. R77 and R72. Still the same. Okay, now the next one is here. The current will flow through here. Let's say there is a fault here. So the current will flow through here, divide into four paths. Okay, the path four path. So these four paths will form a parallel circuit. Okay, now we check the effort before the load. So cycle two, R57, S12, intake one two need to open. Okay, cycle two, intake one two and R57, cycle 2, intake 1, 2, okay, cycle 1, intake 1, sorry, cycle 2, in, cycle 2, intake 1, 2, cycle 2, intake 1, 2, and R57, okay, and then S12, S12 we can do in this way, okay, S12 connected to TB32. Here is a TB32 come from S12. Okay. TB32. Okay. R57. Okay. Now resistance remain the same. So now we have to check the earth fork at the load. So we continue to do the same thing. Normalize the connection and open this point two. And then normalize this, open this connection, normalize this, open connection this, normalize this, open connection this. Resistance remain the same. That means there is no effort before the load and at the load. I will not continue to check the effort after the load because I know it will be okay for this parallel circuit. So let's normalize back the wiring connection. 
db3 1 intake 1 1 intake 2 1 and r5 2 okay now we proceed to here okay let's say there's a fault okay after to look at this point so the current from the multimeter flow to point 2 flow to, to this path and divide into two paths as i say divide or branch mean parallel circuit in so current will branch out into two paths in this parallel circuit and then short circuit to earth if there is an effort at this point okay now we check the effort before the load s22 into 22 okay as we know s22 S22 is TB34. Here TB34 here S22. Okay. S22 is a TB34 intake to 2. Okay. TB34 intake to ah, the resistance change. Intake to 2. Okay. Open circuit. Okay. Meaning when I open connection at S22 intake to 2, there is an open circuit. Okay. Meaning the circuit before the loop is okay after i connect back there is a resistance reading that means it there, there is a fault either at the load or after the load okay so now i connect back and op now i want to check the effort at the load so i need to normalize back the winding connection to s22 intake 2 and then open s21 and intake to 1 if the resistance is open circuit so that means there's no effort before the load and at the load if there's a resistance reading confirm there is a effort at the load whether at the s2 solenoid valve or intake 2 lighting okay now normalize this one open this one and intake 2 1 so normalize here open this one ah there's a resistance reading so now let's confirm there's a effort but we do not know the effort is at the S2 solenoid valve or intake to load. So we have to check one by one. So we starting to check the S2, 1 and 2. S2, 1 and 2 is a DB33 and DB34. DB33 and DB34. As I, as I said before, to check the effort or device internally short circuit, we have to open both ends. Okay, DB33 and DB34 db33 and db34 then we put the red plot here and measure whether now it has resistance instead of open circuit that means there's an effort at the s2 solenoid valve so we have to go to the fuel side and, and check the s2 solenoid valve now i open both and and double check zero ohm there's a resistance reading that means there's an effort so effort happened at the solenoid valve so i need to change this one and maybe i can measure one more time see the resistance is overload or open circuit meaning there's no longer having a fault in the s2 solenoid valve now i need to normalize back all the wiring connection okay and this one this one okay and then this one this one and then this one okay normalize the multimeter and then change the fuse okay double confirm all the wiring has been connected back okay there's no more di disconnected wiring okay then remove the lock of takeout Turn on the power supply and then we can start to drain the water <clears throat> now the